Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. Finding people will be the hardest part. People are full of excuses. Uh, he didn't put also in, and I just plugged that in. Just you know, also in, uh, full of excuses. But we'll find a few that will uh, you'll need. It's fucking hard, and it will take everything you've got. But it's worth it. Once you do something meaningful in life, and I would add parenthetically, which you haven't done to date, um, thank you. Um, everything will change, uh, and it will start coming to you much easier. The um, and we're talking to him in a couple hours, or in an hour, I guess. Um, in that vein, because in his one and only previous video from about three and a half years ago, two and a half years ago, it took him two and a half years to do the deal. It was a uh, $4.9 billion deal, of which he only got $31 million. Because when you do, and I haven't got to that part yet, when you do uh, not just cross-continent, cross, uh, around the world deals, and you use, uh, you're using foreign governments, and you have foreign uh, chairmen, and et cetera, et cetera, they can't necessarily be dependent on. And uh, partially through the deal, um, the, the first $180 million came in. It was the first tranche. It was five tranches that it released. Up to a little short of $5 billion, as I recall. And I told him, I, I, I take a haircut and get all your fees up front. Now, he was going to make about two, I don't know, two, 250 million bucks. And he says, well, he didn't want to do that. It worked two and a half years on the deal. He didn't want to do it. And you wouldn't want to do it either. Most of you wouldn't have listened to me. Uh, but he did listen to me. And as we went on camera, he opened up his uh, mailbox, whatever you call it, and he says thirty-one million five hundred sixty. Foot hit his account. To him, his, his account. not a big deal, but anyway, thirty-one million. And all the other professionals in the deal, as I recall, PwC, blah blah blah, didn't want to take a haircut. They had worked two and a half years on the deal, so they're not going to take a reduction in the fee. Haircut means a reduction in the fee. There was about two and a half million dollars on fees, as I recall. And uh, Shortly thereafter, the deal disintegrated. There was 180 million that transferred, 31 went to him, 150 disappeared, and the rest of the 4.9 billion disappeared. Happens all the time. Middle East, China, Korea, all the time it disappeared. And we know where it goes, don't we? Into the pockets of the fucking thieves that are in government. So then uh, the, uh, the rest of the professionals in the transaction come to his door, and he used to live, I think, in the penthouse of uh, Four Seasons at Kuala Lumpur or someplace. I mean, he lives like King Farouk. I mean, he lived like a king, okay, before he ever met me. He lives large, not just because he weighed 9,000 pounds. He lives large. Um, and uh, I told him to tell everybody to fuck off. You get no fee. You had a chance, and you said no. And I also told him to move because I said, you're going to be dead. And he moved to an undisclosed place. Now, now he lives in another penthouse, five times bigger. And we're going to talk to him in an hour or so. Um, but the, the method to the madness is when I tell you to take the money and put it in your pocket and run like a thief in the night, you are a fucking mo And most of you won't. Even though I'm telling you this story, even though we don't use that webinar anymore with him live, telling you, take the fucking money and run like a thief in the night, you won't. Why? Self-sabotage. Because you don't, you don't really want to have any money. You want to be able to say, QLA didn't work because I was a meathead, stupid motherfucker. I can give you example after example after example. Well, I don't want to get it. I don't, I, I'm not going to take a haircut for $150 million less than I'm supposed to get. That's what you'd say. I didn't come to everybody. Because you don't want it. If there's not three people in this room that really believe they deserve generational wealth. Not three. Maybe two and a half. Irrespective of what you think. And now we're going to show you where's the fucking thing? The clicker. This is you. Three months, three years, or 15 years from now. 
Do you see any moving? No, sir. None moving, sir. Check them. Bring that all up here. These are you that gave up. Those are dead fucking bodies. Check them. Make sure. These are dead, sir. That looks like a couple of you. Not you, black man, but I mean. Head easy. Careful with your oars. Don't hit them. I wouldn't be careful with the oars. They're dead. Is there anyone alive out there? And normally every group's got a good intuition that tries to save the other guy's lives. And then he winds up dead. We waited. Maybe this group won't have a good intuition. This is how it is, kids. Well, keep checking them. Keep looking. Keep looking. Let's save somebody. Can anyone hear me? This is the real world. Somebody asked me, how can you stand in front of them, take their money, and know they're all going to die, metaphorically speaking? It was hard 25 years ago. It's not hard now. You're going to hear Thomas, my current poster boy, beat your fucking ass later in the week. Look in front of you, look behind you, look to the left, look to the right. They're all going to fail. Remember yesterday I said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I ran it on and on and on about how you, uh, we used to um, do the characteristics of Steve Jobs and the various guys. And I said, you and your fucking life, if you live to be a thousand, will never have any of my characteristics to make a lot of money. But you've already forgotten that. If this was easy peasy, like my daughter said 20 years ago, there'd be... A hundred trillion dollars I would have produced. But you'll figure out a reason not to do it. And almost always, it's your family. Not always, but almost always, it's your family, directly or indirectly. Your mother's going to come out with cancer. And there's nobody to take care of her. You don't have enough money because you, you have dirt poor to, to put her in a proper place, 25 grand a month or 2500 a month, right? So it's you, it'll be you. And that'll be your reason for not succeeding with QLA. Your kid, we had a guy, his nine-year-old daughter got knocked up. I didn't know you could get knocked up in nine years. Nine-year-old daughter that got knocked up. So he, divide, he devoted the rest of his life because he was obviously a shitty parent, he thought to allow her to get knocked up at nine, right? So the rest of his life was wasted making sure that she was okay. I have a million stories. The nine-year-old knocked up is not the worst. The worst story I wouldn't tell on YouTube. We've had fathers knock up their kids. Not nine, though. A little older than that. I'm not suggesting that it's a good practice. For, uh, that, so I don't want a bunch of fucking emails about that. This is serious shit. And I believe the reason why Simon wrote this before he was going to talk to us is he knows it's a, it's a tough motherfucker. But he's created generational wealth. It's easy to make 5, 10, 25, 50 million. And I told you the first day, I give you 20 million, get out of here. Most of you would take it. And then the next day, I think uh, yesterday, I got up to 30 or 40 million. You take it. There'd be nobody here. And I'm fortunately for you, or unfortunately for you, depending on how you want to look at it, I'm still passionate about this because it still gripes me. It pisses me off how easy you give up. For those of you that have children, you shouldn't have had it, but anyway, for those of you that have children, I take your cell, you got five or six or three or two months or some shit like that, right? Okay, fucking moron you are. Anyway, sit her down. Can she sit up straight by herself? Okay, not yet. Not, so we, we, we put a rope on her fucking uh, um, wrist, and we hang her here, and I put a gun right in her fucking mouth. 
just like my dad did to me. I was a lot older than that. You got 72 hours to such and such, or I'm going to blow the little fuckhead's head right off her shoulders. To her, right? Okay. He'd get his fat ass out there, and he'd, assuming that you love the little shit, and you probably still do because it's a little shit, and he'd get the shit done. Otherwise, boom! No, none of you have ever seen it, somebody's head blown off. But anyway, it accelerates. It's like in the, almost like in the movies, except it happens faster because it's not in slow motion. You can get this shit done. I used to use an analogy. Um, uh, Elon Musk and those guys uh, uh, they do these extraordinary things. It's because they're, they're focused. They're obsessed. They're obsessed. They're psychopaths. They do not uh, deal in self-reflection. You think Elon Musk or Steve Jobs gives a shit? Well, we know they don't give a shit what you think. Anyway, so uh, we put uh, scaffolding. I used to work construction when, uh, when I was a kid. And these big uh, two-by-twelves that you have on the side of buildings that you walk on and you... You know, do shit on the, on the buildings. And, uh, I used to carry, uh, 45 pound buckets of cement, uh, and my little, uh, hands from a high school student in, in, at the beginning of my uh, university flunking out. Uh, the, uh, I had blisters and, uh, I had to put tape. Uh, anyway, by the end of the summer, I could carry two 45 pound deals in each hand and climb the scaffolding just with my feet. Fell several times. Put it up 10 stories, and we put a 2 by 12 here, and where that camera is there, and um, I put $1,000 bills, which if I could find some, $1,000 bills on the scaffolding, and at the end, I had uh, $500,000. You could go back on 10, on, on 10 feet up, you could go back and forth on that scaffolding all day long, probably. Some of you would get tired, you'd crawl on your knees to get, get the money, right? You put it 100 stories up. Most of you would pass on it. Okay? Risk reward. Now I put your little shit kid, that little uh, daughter of his again, I'm going to douse you with gasoline. He'd get his fat ass across the best he could or die trying. I put your wife, the slag slut you fuck in the ass every night, across there. Fuck her. Burn the bitch. There are some things you're willing to, remember that I said there's some things worth to go to jail for. There's some things that are worth dying for. The slag you fuck in the ass every other night is not one of those things. There's a pay price to action that you still don't understand. But if you leave here in a couple of few days and don't understand, you're doomed. You're doomed. There's no turning back. You've heard a couple of the guys say, Pena is setting you up to shit yourself. Well, that's not exactly accurate. But it's accurate enough from a black guy from South Africa. This is serious shit. And the irony of this is, as I told you already many times, several times, I used to do it for fucking free. I, I, I don't want to believe I was a goody two-shoes. I don't. Please, God. No, no. But I did it for free. I did it at junior high school, grammar school in East L.A. I did it at airports. What a fool I was. But I'm at the other end of that fucking continuum now. I was hard trying to be soft, something I wasn't. Now I'm hard because I am hard. And if you motherfuckers don't want to be like who you saw last night, um, tennis guy. Yeah. The greatest tennis coach in the history of the world who can't play tennis. And all you want to know is why? He can't play fucking tennis. And you want to know, do I need to know anything about health care? You fucking trash. Black, yellow, brown, trash. You didn't deserve to be born. You should have rolled down your fucking mama's fat thigh. Why do pregnant women weigh, gain 80, 90, 100 pounds? Because they're pigs. And for the first time in their life, well, I can eat anything I want because I'm eating for two. Or what a load of shit. You came from pigs, you can only be a pig. On that happy note, go fuck yourself, YouTube.